All right, <clears throat> I have an iPhone 6s Plus here with half backlight. Dim at the top right. I'm gonna kind of go over how to troubleshoot and diagnose and uh, repair this thing. Okay. All right. First thing I do on a 6s Plus is that uh, there's there's two backlight systems on the 6 Plus and the 6s Plus. So you really want to figure out what um, which which system it is before you start mucking with anything okay so the best way to do that is there's um so this is the rear camera connector up here rear camera connector up here and uh, there's a piece of black tape that goes over these test points over here the best thing to do is you need you're going to need to um connect your screen and power on the phone okay and uh turn your multimeter digit um to to voltage mode so after you pull the tape off, make sure the screen is turned on, and just push the power button for a second, and then you can just uh, test these two points right here. These are the two anode lines, okay? This one's getting 10.7 volts, and this one's getting 3.9 volts. So I've already fixed the backlight filter on uh, on this 10.7 volt line already, and so anyways, that backlight filter fixed that one line. Now we have another problem, which is the other line. Okay, so let's go to ZXW tools here. So when I say the two anode lines, the two anode lines are are pretty much what drive the backlight, drives the backlight on all iPhones. Um, there's two other cathode lines. I don't even know what they do, but I don't think they play a part in, uh, in the brightness of the screen. Um, maybe they do. I'm not sure, but I know that the two anode lines. Once you see the correct voltages on those, then you will uh, you will get a good backlight. All right. So if you look at this test point here, this one says PPLCM BL34 anode connection. This is one this is one of the backlight systems on the 6s plus, and then this test point is the other anode line on the backlight system. Okay. Let me see if I can bring up maybe uh, some schematics so that you guys can get a better understanding of how this thing works. Let's see. Backlight, okay. So on a backlight system, you have you have six lines essentially, okay, and these they they represent six pins on the LCD digitizer connector on the 6s plus, all right. So I believe well you can't see it here, but um, I'll show I'll show them to you later. You can kind of just you can go on ZXW and you'll see all the the pins that represent the backlight system, all right? So all these pins right here um, are represented by the con, the con line, okay? And from the from the pin, they uh, they go to a filter, uh, which acts as a fuse, all right? So that's that's your backlight filter. There are six of them, and then this ca capacitor right here is used to really just smooth the voltage on the um, that's incoming into the connection, okay? So from this uh, let me see if I can find the back the actual backlight system. All right, so from the filter, you got to scroll down to the actual backlight system now. Somewhere. Might be up north. Probably is up north. All right, it's probably up this way somewhere. Could probably just do a search for it. Let's just do that. Backlight. All right, here you go. So LED backlight drivers. All right. So this is how. So we're gonna work our way backwards here. Okay. So you have the anode line here, and then you have the anode line here. So these are your two backlight systems on the 6s plus. So this is coming from the connector on the on the right side here. So from the right side, you have um, in each backlight system you have two diodes two coils and then this is the power source right here PPVCC main all right and of course you have this um, backlight IC which acts as a switch to uh, to boost the voltage from from the VCC main voltage to the to the backlight voltage when the screen is on which is either going to be 10.7 something above 10 volts all right so so that kind of gives you an idea of how the backlight system works all right so let's go back to the ZXW tools here, and now now we so we've determined that it is this pad right here, 
this test point right here that's at fault. All right, we're not getting the correct voltage. We're getting we're getting the VCC main voltage, which means that something along this line right here is not working. Is that right? Let me double check it one more time. Sorry, this one's 10.7. Okay, so this one is working and this one is not working. All right, so we're gonna trace this one to find out what's going on with this line right here. This should be uh, somewhere above 10 volts when the screen is powered on. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the screen and the power. So as you can see, this is uh, this is kind of damaged here, you know, but that should not affect the actual voltage to the um, to the connector. Okay, I mean, if I'm if I'm getting the correct voltage, then then uh, that's understandable, you know. But if I'm not getting the correct voltage, then it's not going to be the connector at this point. It may also be the connector, but there's definitely a problem with one of these filters or something. Okay, so from this test point, we go to this pin. From the pin, we have a capacitor here. Smooths out the voltage, and then we have a filter here. Okay, so let's test this filter to see if that is working. All right, so you switch your multimeter continuity mode, and see the beeps or not, basically. All right, and it doesn't beep. All right, so just just to make sure that this is the correct filter that we're testing, let's let's trace it from here to here. All right, so that okay. So we know that. We know that there's continuity from the pin to the filter, but nothing across the filter. Uh, so, if, so a filter is, is literally just the um, is really just a, a, a wire, basically, and the point of it is so that um, it acts as a fuse, basically. So, if there's too much current that goes through this filter, it's going to blow, right? So that's kind of you know, it's it's no different than having a filter in your house, uh, you know, your circuit breaker or something like that. It's no different than that. That that's exactly what this filter is here, because um, you don't want your screen blown out. You know, without this filter, the screen will blow out, and they'll they'll cost you a lot more than what this filter is going to cost you here. Okay, um, so we know that this filter is bad because there's no continuity across it. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the filter. And and here's the thing: if you're having problems removing these filters, or and you know you see that it's so easy for me, and uh, I guarantee you that it's not going to be very easy for me if I'm using crappy tools. You know, this um, I'm using the JBC uh, NASE 2B uh, micro soldering station, which uh, retails for about uh, almost 1,400 bucks here. So it's not a cheap thing, but you know, I mean, if you're having problems doing this, it's most likely because you're not using the proper tools, or the, the tools that you're using are, 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 you know, making it harder. Basically, you know, I mean, I pay to make to have things easier for me so that I can I can do more volume. You know, um, if you're doing ones here and there, then maybe you know, that's fine. But uh, you know, if you're doing this for a living. Then you really want better tools, you know. That's that's what it comes down to. Unless you just don't value your time, then The thing I like about these backlight problems is that you know the solutions are pretty much definitive. You know, there's no there's no uh, second guessing things. You know, I mean, if you're not getting the correct voltage on the backlight on the anode line, then you know that there's something wrong. You know, uh, 
touch IC, you know, you get a boot loop and you're like, what the hell is going on? Or you get like a no power and then you're like, what the, you know, and then you have to kind of figure out, retrace your steps and stuff like that. And I had a TriStar yesterday and man, the, um, the phone was acting sluggish after I finished that, and uh, you know the the camera mics weren't working, the audio wasn't working, and I'm like, well, gosh, it's been a few hours realizing that I had nicked the um, the small audio IC chip, and uh, and that that cracked it, and that caused some issues. So I'm just gonna remove this. But those are kind of things you deal with. With backlight, I feel like it's 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 fairly um, straightforward you know for the most part and let me, where are my here it is So you really want to tin those pads pretty good, otherwise, uh, otherwise you're going to make your thing, your life a little bit harder. And uh, just make sure you have some flux on there, and then that's pretty much it right there, all right? For the most part, let me get a little more flux on there. Actually, I don't. All right. And then you just, you really just kind of heat it, push it down, and heat it up, you know, and then boom, you get a nice little shiny shiny uh, joint there and that's exactly what you want so let's clean this up with some IPA here and okay so let's uh, power the sucker on again and see what uh, see what becomes of it All right, so there we go. We have a full backlight, and that, that is considered repaired. I replaced both backlight filters, and that fixed the problem. So there you have it. Uh, that's it, really. I mean, you know, that's how you fix a a backlight system. So when you say, oh, half backlight, you know, what is it? It's, the, it's probably the backlight I see. Well, I mean, that's not guaranteed, you know. I mean, I think I think what you have to do is work your way backwards. Starting from the from the connector. I mean, that's still that's really the best best and only way to do it. You know. Um, so, anyways, hope, hopefully this helps.